All right. Ah, a lot. No, not a lot. Some of this, especially today, is going to be hopefully a review of a previous class or two that you have taken. We're going to look at basic atomic structure and then um, go from there um, into... Um, did you guys, you guys know about average atomic mass? Okay. It's one of the numbers on the periodic table. Okay. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to get to it. So we're going to learn where those come from and actually how to calculate those from, from experimental data. Um, we're also going to introduce the concept of the mole, which is the main concept you're going to rely on from the rest of this year. Everything in chemistry comes back to the mole as far as the calculations are concerned. Do you like the mole? Nothing. Um, so anyway, just out of curiosity, does anyone know the three, and I'm sure you do, um, particles that make up an atom? They are, in any order. Protons, hold on. Protons. Now, I'm going to skip, I would, if I were you, I would skip a couple of lines between these things because we're going to start talking about bits, bits and pieces of these. Go ahead. Peyton, what's another one? Electrons. And everyone together now? Neutrons. Neutrons. Excellent. I have a problem. I got a lot of problems. What do we know about a proton? Where is a proton located? In the nucleus. What else do we know? Pardon? Positively charged. What else do we know about it? That's probably about what? It does have mass. Do you know what this mass is? Okay. First of all, I want to show you the symbol we're going to use for representing a proton. It's going to be a capital P with a plus sign as a superscript. Okay. Um, has an actual mass of... 1.67 times 10 to the, give me a second, I want to know if I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go grams or kilograms here, 28, 24, um, negative 24 kilograms. I lied, I lied, I lied, grams. Sorry about that. Or a relative mass of one AMU. Anyone want to take a stab as to what an AMU is? And it's not a little bird found in New Zealand. That would be an emu. What's that? So that. Boom. Atomic mass. Yes. Did you do that all by yourself? Nicely done. Nicely done. Atomic mass unit. When I'm ta when I say relative, I'm talking relative to the other particles in the nucleus. Okay. All right. Anyone? Anything else you want to do there? Okay. Next, electrons. What do we know about electrons? Where are they located? Well, we're gonna we're gonna be a little bit more specific other than saying outside the nucleus. Okay, there are uh, areas in which they are located. And there's a number of different phrases that you can use. Technically, it's called the electron, well, hold on, electron cloud. 
but better that that kind of gives you the overall general idea there are some other terms that can be used you may have heard energy levels have you heard that yet that's actually going to be big later you may have heard orbitals yes no or maybe no. <laughs> if you're really old, like me, you may have heard shells. No. What word have you used? Shells. So that was a really old person that taught you this then. Okay. All right, moving on. So anyway, these are all fairly synonymous. The electron cloud just talks about the area in general. Actually, we won't talk about that uh, in a lot of detail until chapter four, which will be the next chapter. What else do we know about the electron? Negatively charged. Uh, anything else? Oh, they have mass. They have to have mass. They exist. They're made of other things. Actual mass of 9.11 times 10 to the negative, let me see, I want grams there, so I have to go grams here, so 27 grams. Wait a minute, I lied, 28 grams. kind of running out of room for my neutrons there, aren't I? My electrons are getting in the way of the neutrons. There's actually something about that. Um, anyway, a relative mass of, well, let's see if you guys can figure this out. You said two. No, it's not. Well, we have some evidence up here in which we might be able to deduce what the relative mass is. It's a lot smaller, it's a lot smaller than a proton. Relatively, how much smaller? What's that? You have better evidence there. Which is? I disagree. Come on, don't even use that. That does nothing for you. Why did you say a, a thousand? It is four. There you go. Quote, not now, although this is getting close to the next level, right? Okay. So somewhere between a thousand and ten thousand times smaller than <laughs> a new or a proton. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty tiny. So what do you think its relative mass is compared to a neutron or a proton is? What were you saying earlier? I, I get it, but but what were you saying earlier? What was the very first comment you said when I talked about the mass of an electron? Okay, a relative mass of zero amus. Now. That's, and that goes back to that idea of me coming up to Addie and pulling a hair off of her head and asking you how her weight changed. Would her weight have changed? No. Does the hair have mass, though? Yes. Just relative to the rest of her, it has very little. It's almost negligible. Does that make any sense? Okay. Lastly, a Jimmy. Oh, by the way, symbol for electron, nobody bothered it. Lowercase e with a superscript negative. I already did that, didn't I? Yeah, I, I just do it automatically. I don't even, I just do it automatically. <laughs> Neutrons located in the nucleus. We'll get back to what that means here in a second. 
actual mass of to three sig significant figures, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Hmm, wait a minute. Now, that's to three significant figures. A little bit later, it might be today or might have to be Monday, um, we're going to find out to, if you go a little bit more with a little bit more precision, there is a small mass difference between the proton and the electron, or sorry about that, the proton and the neutron. Currently, we're not going to get into that. Therefore, what do you think its uh, relative mass is? 1 AMU. And what about its charge? It has no charge. It is neutral. Which brings me up to this joke. So a neutron walks into a bar, sits down. Bartender comes up, says, hey, what can I get you? Ah, I'll have a beer. Okay. Goes away, comes back, brings him a beer. Neutron asks, how much, how, much for you? how much do I owe you? Bartender says, for you, no charge. The first time all year long Alyssa has smiled in this class. <laughs> the stupidest joke I've told so far, yet she gets an A for the day. All right. What's that? Stupid, stupider. <laughs> can you, can you spell that for me? <laughs> anyway, um, so far so good. You guys were probably aware of at least these two ideas. May not have known about the mass. May have known about the mass. I don't know. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Would you like to? T anyone want to take a stab? Capital N. Well, it can't be plus or minus. I, I understand. How about zero? Okay. In a way, what's kind of funny, for reasons that you have absolutely zero idea, that's actually better. We'll talk about that later. Um, all right, so far so good. Can I move away from here? Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, again, I'm hoping um, a brief review of something you've covered in a previous class. Um, we are going to eventually get away from this idea, but at least for the time being, it served, your, it served its purpose for what you, you have done with the atom so far. It's going to serve our purpose for what we're going to do with the atom in this chapter. Next chapter, though, we're going to take it and go bit and, and, and expand it and uh, get into more detail. You guys may or more. How are how are all these things oriented? Well, we're going to look at the Bohr model of the atom. Have you guys been introduced to the Bohr model of the atom? Okay. Now, there's a guy by the name of Niels Bohr back in the very early 1900s, I think in the teens-ish, that first came up with this idea. Now, he took the idea, uh, he, actually what he did is, you got to understand, there were so many people doing so many things with um, the, um, trying to um, determine the structure of an atom. And then here's the other thing. I mean, I know this is, means nothing. You guys, the <laughs> Vietnam War is not even on your radar. You're aware of the existence of the Vietnam War, right? Some of you might have some grandparents that possibly participated in that, okay, to some extent. That is the extent of your knowledge of this war, okay? So when I mention the Civil War, <laughs> I mean, the Vietnam War is so far beyond your scope that, you know, the Civil War is even further, okay? <laughs> So, but where I'm going with this is, there was, it was until after the Civil War before the actual idea of an atom became, evidence of an atom became, uh, it came around. Okay, so we're talking relatively recent history in the grand scheme of the history of us. 
okay? The Civil War, after the Civil War is when, and even up until close to the, the uh, turn of the century, into the 20th century, there were still a lot of, hold out, a lot of holdouts, not really, uh, I don't know, I don't know if that's right or not, okay? So this whole idea of coming up with the structure of an atom, finally enough people were convinced that, okay, yeah, all right, atoms exist, but then people started going, well, what, if, what are the atoms made of? So there was a lot of debate, debate on that. Well, there were a lot of people who did some experiments on that. You guys may have covered something called Rutherford's gold foil experiment. Does that sound familiar or not? Okay, well, I'm, there's some, there's going to be a little activity, not so much an activity, but there's going to be a little uh, assignment you guys are going to have, which will help you dive into that a little bit. But um, so between Rutherford, a couple other guys, um, doing some experiments on matter, kind of came up with the idea that, yes, there are. The proton was discovered, I believe, in 1909-ish, give or take a little bit. The electron was actually discovered prior to that, probably like 1899-ish, okay? Um, why, the, why would the electron be uh, more easily discovered? And what happens to electrons, you may or may not know. Can they leave the atom yeah. relatively easily? Mm -hmm. Yeah, believe it or not, that's what electricity is. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Electricity is electrons flowing from one place to another. So, okay. Anyway, um, so the electrons were discovered first, protons later. The neutron was not discovered until the 1930s. Why would it take so long to discover the neutron? They had no charge. Proton and electron were relatively easy to discover because you could manipulate them by putting them in magnetic fields and all that kind of stuff. But neutron, okay. In fact, I've got a really, really, really old chemistry textbook. We're going to do some calculations to try to find that average atomic mass I referred to later, which relies on, well, half the mass of, around half the mass of any atom is a neutron. You should have seen the ways they are trying to get people to calculate the mass of an atom without knowing about neutrons. They're flat out making stuff up. I mean, the best people in the world were making stuff up because they didn't know. I know, it was weird. Anyway, moving on. Um, this will be about the last time we ever do what I'm about to do. Ah, you know what? I'm going to do it the right way. I'm not even going to fiddle with the wrong way. I'm going to go green for neutron. What do you want the proton to be? Blue? Excellent. Okay, there's the nucleus. Now, if this were the actual size of a nucleus, the first energy level, the first orbital, the first shell, whatever it is that you guys would want to use, would probably be, oh, I don't know, over on the stage of the auditorium maybe further. What's that, about golf ball size? A little bit bigger than golf ball sized? Okay, yeah, so the first electron would probably be close to where the auditorium is. Yeah, from here to the auditorium, if this were the actual size of the nucleus. So here's my question, what's in between those two things? What's that again? Good. What's currently coming out of your mouths? Nothing. nothing. Air. Air is something. <laughs> okay. Nothing. So what is an atom? It's mostly nothing. You are currently standing on nothing. Mostly. By the way... Good things happen in that ninth period class. They really do. G really good discussions actually happen in that class. You just have to s sort through all the, 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 the noise, the wall of noise. This is a good discussion we actually had the other day. We're you're sitting on nothing. You're standing on nothing, mostly. 
we're mostly nothing. Some of you less nothing than more nothing than others. <laughs> Okay, so you might be wondering, why aren't we just, what are we made of? Atoms. What's the floor made of? Atoms. What is on the very outside of atoms? All atoms. Electrons. What is the charge on electrons? And what do like charges have a tendency to do? Repel. We're kind of, in a way, almost floating on top of the floor. Isn't that weird? So if we had, like, if humans had, like, a positively charged, we would just, like, stick, stick to it? Yes. Like, our bodies just, like... The foundation that side is a Right. Okay. It confuses me, too. Like, I remember hearing someone say, like, atoms can't touch each other. They kind of don't. But, 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 like, you can feel your fingers touching. Uh, no, our brains perceive that as, yes. Is that kind of what you just said? Look at this girl. Okay, so even though this is clearly not to scale... Okay, I'm going to put the electrons out here. So, we'll call the blue babies little protons. We'll call the green little babies. I know, you can do whatever you want. Neutrons. And, of course, the little E is an electron. This will be, okay, now, we could have multiple electrons, yes? Well, well, we'll get to that. Okay, so anyway, electrons are out in the outer, in the shells, the energy levels, the orbitals, whatever you want to call them. Um, that will be the last time you're going to write a bunch of little E's. I know that's what you did in your previous science class, but I'm not going to take the time to count them. I'll show you a quick and dirty little way around that, okay? But isn't that what you guys did? You drew a bunch of circles and a bunch of E's, and somebody had to count. You had to write all those little E's, and somebody had to count all those little E's. I'm not going to do that, okay? Um, anyway, this is called the Bohr model by the name, like I said, a Danish scientist uh, by the name of Niels Bohr that came up with this idea after using the results of a lot of other people's experiments. This worked for a few years. Uh, but then as more knowledge came about, this is the first time that anybody organized an atom like this with the idea that there was a very, very tiny nucleus and electrons on the very, very outer edges of the atom. Okay, that's the first time anybody put those two ideas together. It's been expanded since then, but that's all right. Um, we had to start somewhere, just like you guys um, have to start your knowledge of significant figures somewhere. I mean, you've you got to start small, and then everything just gets bigger. Um, let me see, what else do I want to do here? Oh, the nucleus. Here's what you may have done before and actually been shown to do before, and I stopped doing this a number of years ago. Don't write this down. How many of you have drawn atoms like this before? Put like a little circle to represent the nucleus, which is fine. And then, the, you know, most of you have done that before, right? Here's what I started noticing, though, after a number of years, is that students seemed to think that the nucleus of an atom was an actual structure, like a, like a, a thing, like the nucleus of a cell, an actual structure that keeps the protons and neutrons together. Yeah. You see where I'm going with that? And I don't want that idea to be in your brain. So this little thing that I drew over here, don't do that. There is no structure that holds the atom or the protons and neutrons inside the, the atom. They are attracted to each other. In, 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 in the teacher industry, this is called wait time. Meaning I'm waiting for that concept to think to sink in and waiting for someone to go, 
Hmm. Wait a minute. Okay, this will come up later. Um, so all the protons and neutrons are jammed into a really, really tiny little spot in the middle. The electrons are way on the outside. Uh-oh, it might happen. Hmm. What's that? Because they're attracted to each other. Where? We mean move together. Like out of the center. Pardon? Out of the center. Well, they, they do. For example, this air, this oxygen molecule, this one from here to here, and the electrons went with it. That was good. Can you guys do that again? <laughs> one, two, three. No, no. Yes, they can't. All right. Hey, listen, listen. This will will readdress this a little bit later, because there's going to be something that's going to come up, and you guys are going to go, hmm. All right. Anyway, uh, now let's relate the atomic structure to the periodic table. Okay. You know, you're going to look at five different periodic tables. All five of those periodic tables might have very similar information in each block, but they're arranged in the block differently. So what I'm about to draw is just a random, I'm just showing the information. It might be different on a periodic table that you guys ever see. Um, let's go with, uh, let's go with that. Okay, what is that called? No, I mean, what is that thing that I just put on there called? Symbol. It's called a symbol. Excellent. And someone said this correctly. This is copper. That's also information that's going to be on there. Um, give me a second. I did. Dang it, my brain's not quite working right now. Hold on, give me a second. I know. I should probably sleep sleeping a little bit more. Um Ah, shoot. All right, it's all going to come back to me. There we go. That was dumb. I knew that. Okay, these are the four basic pieces of information you're going to find on any one block on the periodic table. There might be fancier periodic tables that have more than that. There might be less fancy periodic tables that have less than that. Okay, but in general, this is the basic stuff you're going to need for this class. You really won't need anything else. Um, you probably knew of the existence of the symbols, you probably knew of the existence of the names, and you may have known of the existence of this number, possibly this number. I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay? Now, what are these things? Well, this is called the atomic number. What does the atomic number indicate? What does it represent? Say this again? No number of protons. Now, I know where you were going, okay? In a neutral atom, meaning an atom that has no charge, what are the only particles in an atom that have charges? Protons and electrons, okay? In a neutral atom, it is also the number of electrons, but it actually indicates the number of protons. The number of electrons can change. You may or may not have known that. The number of protons for an atom, for an element, can't change. So anyway, I will go ahead and put this. 
Okay. Clearly, this CU is its symbol. I'm going to go into more detail in this on this later, but the first letter is always capitalized. Any subsequent le letters are never capitalized. First one always is. If there's more than one, this, the rest of them are never capitalized. We'll get into a whole big argument, not argument, but I'll have to work with you on some of that. Some of you will resist that idea. And then down here we have its name. Very good. And lastly, we have something called the average atomic mass. So this is going to be possibly the first time that I've deviated from things that you've known. Average atomic mass. Where is, uh, from where is an average atomic mass derived? Well, what it is, is the weighted average of the mass numbers of the isotopes of an atom. Weighted average of the mass numbers of the isotopes of an atom. You guys know what mass number is? And isotopes. What's an isotope? Say this again. Or it's not that you take one out. It's related to the number of neutrons. We'll get to that, though. What's the mass number? Right. Okay, so here we go. Um, mass number. The number of particles in the nucleus. Where are the particles? It indicates the number of particles in the nucleus. Where is that found on the periodic table? Good answer. It's not. It's represented in this number. We'll talk about how to get there here in a little bit. But it's not indicated on the periodic table. What are the particles in the nucleus? Protons plus neutrons. Okay? Now, how many protons does every single atom in the history of the universe have of copper? How many protons does every single atom of copper have? 29. Okay? But notice that the mass of copper is 63. Its average mass is 63. Where does the rest of the mass come from? Different numbers of neutrons, which is what we're going to talk about on Monday. Monday. And I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>